What's going on guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add likes to your blog with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to add the ability to add likes to our posts. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, moving right along. In this video, we're going to start to add likes to our posts. So, you know, the ability for people to click the like button, give a little thumbs up or whatever. So let's start out. Let's head over to our models.py file and let's come down here to our post model. And we need to add a new field, a new column in our table here. So let's just call this likes. And let's set this equal to models dot. Now this is going to be a little bit different. We need to use a many to many field. And this allows us to associate different things from different tables. So we're going to be associating the users with the likes with the posts. So a user can have many likes, right? And a post can have many likes. So many to many is the field we want to use. And we want to set this on our user model. And then we give this a related name. And I'm going to call this blog post. Right. And the related name is sort of like a foreign key. It's the way that this many to many uh, association sort of associates the many things to each other through this related name, we give them each a related name called blog post. So, okay, we can go ahead and save this. Now, anytime we make a change to the database like this, we need to migrate our database. We need to make a migration and then we need to migrate it. So it's a two step process. So let's head over here and control C to break out of our server. And let's go Python manage.py make migrations. And again, we're in our C simple blog slash a blog directory. Our virtual environment is turned on and okay. We've made our migration. Now we need to go Python manage.py migrate. And okay, that's done. Now let's take a look at what we've actually done. And we can pull up a little shell here and look inside of our database. We've never really done this before, but you can go Python manage dot pi and then just call DB shell. And nothing seems to happen, but we're actually in the database shell now. And for instance, we can go dot tables to see what tables we have. And you'll notice now we have this the blog post likes table right? That wasn't there before. And this was created because of our many to many associations. So here we can actually look inside of this, we can go dot header on dot mode column. And you don't really need to know what we're doing here. I'm just doing this to show you what's in here. So and then pragma table underscore info. And then we can just look up what table we want to look at. We want to look at the blog underscore post underscore likes. And also you need to end this with a semicolon. All right, so uh, that should have went right here, but you can do it on the separate line too. And you see, we've got this new kind of table here and it has an ID, it has a post ID and a user ID. So the post ID is the specific post, right? So we click on a blog post, right? The user ID is who's logged in. So you have to be logged in in order to like a blog post because we want to keep track of, of, of what you've done. And then you have a, an ID for it itself. So this will allow us to keep track of if a user likes a blog post and which blog post that was and did they in fact like it or not, right? So, okay, that's cool. Now I'm going to control C to break out of here and let's just go ahead and run our server again. So now if we head back over here and let's look in our admin section real quick also, and then click on posts and any of these posts, you see now we have this like section right here and it has our two logged in users. Now, none of these are highlighted. That means none of these people have liked a blog post, right? If we click this and then saved it, that would mean that, that admin liked this blog post. Now this is not the best way to do it. Obviously, we want to be able to do this from the page itself. So how do we do that? Well, let's uh, head over to one of John Elder's posts doesn't really matter. So let's head over to our code. 
and let's go to our article details page. And this is the page that, you know, puts the blog posts on the screen. And here we have the back button. Let's give this a couple of line breaks. And this is probably not a great place to put this, but we'll we'll do it right here for now. And let's give this a horizontal rule, just a line across the screen, and maybe another line break underneath that. Now we need to create a form. So let's go form action equals. Now where do we want to point this? Let's point this to a URL of like underscore post. Now we haven't created this URL just yet. And we'll do that in a second. And we also want to pass the post dot primary key. So when we click on this thing, we know, hey, we're on blog post number 15. Keep track of that, right? So okay, we also want to give this a method equals post. And that's good. Now every form we have, let's just go ahead and close that form tag. And now every form we have, we need a CSRF token. I think we've talked about this before. We just go CSRF underscore token. And that's good there. Now finally, we need just a button, right? So let's go button. And let's close our button. And inside and this for this button, let's type, uh, let's put the word like for now. Now this button needs a type. So let's go type equals submit. And it also needs a name. So we can keep track of it. And let's call it post underscore ID. It also needs a value. So let's give this a post, uh, let's give this a value of post dot ID. And then finally, this needs a class, to make it look good. So let's give this a, a bootstrap class of btn btn dash primary, and then also btn dash sm to make it small. Okay, so let's save this. And this might not work yet because we haven't created our URL. But let's look just in case. Yeah, I know we have to create our URL first. So let's do that now. Well, before we do that, let's look through this one more time. So we've got the button type submit, it's a submit button, we're giving it a post ID uh, name so that we can keep track of it later. And the value is the post ID. And we're passing the post ID, which is the number of the post. So if we're on blog post 15, this will pass 15 into the back end. And this will allow us to keep track of which blog post is getting the like, right? So that makes sense. So okay, let's make this like post URL. So let's head over to our urls.py file. Boom, create a new cat, a new path here. And we want to give this, we want to call this a like. And we also want to pass that primary key. Because we're gonna use that later. And let's point this to our like view, which we haven't created yet. We'll do that in just a second. And let's give this a name of like post. Don't forget our comma. Okay. So that works. Save this. Now we also need to add this like view up here to our list of views. So we'll do that. Save this. All right. So now we need this like view. So let's head over to our views.py file. And I'm just going to come up here and do it at the top. Now we've been doing class based views, but this is going to be easier as a just regular functional view. We pass the request, we pass the primary key. And we've done this before. Let's see right here with our category view. Right, so we're going to kind of do the same sort of thing. It's just easier this way. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. When this gets called, it means we've liked the post, right? So what do we want to do with that? Well, we need to save that to the database. So we need to know which post we're talking about here. And then we need to save it as a like, right? So we can do that using something called a get object or 404. So we have to actually import that from up here, Django shortcuts. So let's, let's do, uh, let's see, it's get underscore object underscore or 404. And the 404 thing is, hey, get this object, if it doesn't exist, return a 404 error, basically. So let's copy this and come down here. And we can just go post equals get object or 404. And then we want to look up our post table. And we want to grab the ID that equals the request dot post dot get and then post underscore ID. Now what's going on here? What is all of this? This is a form, we're, we're filling out a form, right? And we're submitting it. 
And when we submit it, we can grab something from that form by calling request.post.get and then calling the post ID. Why post ID? Because if we go back to our article detail thing, for our button, we named it post ID. So we're saying grab that, right? And then go back to our views. And then whatever post that is, whatever post ID that is, look, look that up in our post table, right? Post table right there. So, and then assign all of that into this post variable. Then what do we wanna do with it once we've looked up that thing and we've assigned it to this post variable? Well, we wanna save it, save it to the table, save that like to a table. So we can just call post.likes.add and then pass in request.user. Because not only are we saving a like, we're saving, we're, we're saving a like from a user. So we're saying admin likes this post or Bob likes this post. So we have to pass that, that user also in, right? So that will save it if it exists. If not, we'll get an error or whatever. Now we just need to return redirect. Now normally we redirect to like the homepage when we do stuff. But we really don't want to do that now. When somebody clicks the like button, we, you don't want them to redirect them back to the home page. You want them to just sort of stay on that same page and really not even notice that they've done anything or moved anywhere, right? So this is a little bit tricky. We need to, instead of just like returning, let's see, re a render request like we did down here, or let's see, have we returned lazy somewhere? I think I remember doing that at some point. Uh, maybe it was on the forms page. Now we need to do a little bit of voodoo here. So it's probably a bunch of ways you could do this, but this is a sort of an older way that still works. So we want to first import HTTP response redirect, and we report and we import that from Django.httpf or HTTP. So let's see, we don't have Django HTTP yet. So let's go from Django.http import HTTP response redirect. And notice the H, the R, and the R are capital. That's important. So now we can come down here and go return. And then that HTTP response redirect. And then we want to return reverse, which we also need. So we've imported from Django URLs reverse lazy. We also need to import reverse. Okay, do that. So reverse, and then this is a function. And what do we want to return the reverse of? Well, we want to return the reverse of article detail, not details, detail. Then we also want to pass the exact ID. We need to know exactly which article detail, which blog post we're returning, redirecting, reversing to. And to do that, we use our args. Remember, we've looked at args and quargs in the past. So we can go args equal. And then let's see, str, this is a string. And what's what string do we want? The primary key, which is this guy right here, which is the primary key of the post itself, right? A little convoluted. And make sure you got a couple of brackets here at the end to close everything up. Okay, so let's see, let's save this. And I think that looks good. Let's head back over to the site and hit reload. And boom, now we have this little like button down here. Remember, it's small because we use BTN SM for small. So now we can, we're on admin post three. Actually, let's go back and yeah, admin post three, that'll work. Or we can do Bob's post, Bob's second post. Now we click like, uh oh, oh, article underscore detail, typo. So this should be underscore dash detail. Because in our urls.py file, we named this thing article dash detail right there. Okay. So save that, come back, and actually let's go back and do another one. Let's do the admin post three now. And we click like, and boom, it redirects. And we don't even notice anything has changed, right? So did this actually record as a like? How do we know? Well, we're gonna change this so it shows on the screen, but for now we can go to our admin page and go to our posts, and then let's see, admin post three. Now we see admin has been highlighted there. Right. So if we go back to, let's see that Bob's post admin was highlighted there because we also did click that one, too. So now let's head back over to the main page again. Click. Well, let's log out and log back in as Bob now. 
Now we can click on Bob's second post and click like again. Again, nothing seems to have happened, but if we go to our admin section, uh, now we need to log back in as admin. Click posts, click Bob's second post. Now you see both admin and Bob are highlighted in the like section because they've both liked it. So, okay, that looks good. Now, obviously we want to be able to see on the screen itself how many likes a post has. So we need to do some things in order to do that. Let's head over to our models.py file and inside of our post class here, let's come down here, make some space and let's make a little function. Let's call it define total underscore likes. And we always want to pass self to these things. And let's just return self dot likes dot count. And we can just count how many likes a thing has whenever this gets called, right? So let's go ahead and save this. Now we can head over to our views.py file. And in our article details view, right, we need to pass that total likes in into the page itself. And you can see we're already passing our categories in there. We've done this in the past. And we pass this context variable. If we want to pass more context variables, we can just define them. So let's go context. And let's call this total likes. And we want to set this equal to total likes. But total likes doesn't exist yet. So we, we actually need to create a little variable of that. But before we can do total likes, we have to actually look up in the database and see sort of what post we're on and grab some information from it. So I'm going to just call this, I don't know, stuff, right? And we're going to, again, use our get object or 404 thing that we just used earlier. And we want to look up post, but we want to look up a post with ID of self.corgs. And then which one? Well, we could just pass in our primary key. So this will grab from our post table, the post with ID of the primary key that we're currently on. So if we're on the blog article of 15, we want to look up the blog with ID of 15. And that's, this is how we do it. So we've assigned that to stuff. So now we can call stuff dot total underscore likes. And that's a function and then assign it to total like, which then gets passed as a context variable that we can then access on the page. Now, where's this total likes function coming from? That's the thing. Go ahead and save this. That's the thing in our models.py file that we just created this total likes function. We're basically just calling that function from our views.py file right here, right? So we're saying, look up a post right there, post with an ID of whatever ID we're on, and then assign it to stuff, whatever that is, take then the total likes from it, which gets calculated from our models.py file right here. Okay, so that should work. So now we can access this total likes context variable on our page itself. So let's go to our article details page and right next to the like button, let's put a little dash and we can just call total likes. And then uh, we can say likes. Right, so if we save this, hopefully that will do the trick. Head back over to the website, hit reload, and boom, we see two likes on Bob's second post. So if we go back here and click on this one, there's only one like. If we come back here and click on this is my coding tutorial post, there's zero likes. But if we now like it, boom, one like. And then there you go. So uh, a little convoluted, a lot of stuff to take in in this video, but not, not too bad. And in the next video, we'll start to look at how to unlike a post. Uh, this one's getting pretty long, so I think we'll stop right here now for today. And uh, pretty cool. So that's one way to do likes. There's probably a zillion different ways, but uh, I was just thinking off the top of my head and sort of came up with this. There may be a better way or a faster way, but uh, I don't know, this seems to work. So <laughs> we're going to roll with that. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com. You can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.